Ryan, we've got a lot to talk about, don't we? We do. And uh, not the least of which is this douchebag. <laughs> We're being kind and naming him that. Yeah. <laughs> please, guys, please don't shoot at drones, no matter what your senators may tell you. Should we talk about douchebag first? I, yeah. Okay. So, I mean the, so who is this D bag? Who is that dumbass? <laughs> It's a Wyoming senator, uh, and what he uh, has said that um, you can shoot down a drone. That's that, that's you know his wording, right? That you can take a shotgun and shoot it down. That's what he said. Yeah. Oh my God! Please that, don't. You know, no. a little violation of 18 USC 32, but oh, okay, go for it. So Dude, is is he presenting I have been a shot bill at twice while flying drones? And, and we're going to share that cool. here in just a second. Is he pa- is he putting a bill in for this, or is he just talking to talk, or is he actually is this going to be? Yeah. So uh, here's the unfortunate part. Um, everybody in the community needs to know what's going on uh, in Wyoming. Uh, they have put forward a bill uh, to uh, disallow drones to fly over private property, and it, they're calling it aerial trespass. Right. Um, they've also tied this with another bill. Uh, that disallows flying over a prison or a jail. Um, the the bills themselves, they were introduced last uh, session as well in two, uh, 2022. Um, they died in, in the house. They never even got picked up by the house. Mm-hmm. Um, this time through, they went right through the Senate, right through the Senate committee, uh, unanimously voted to the Senate floor and voted through to the house. So um, this one's getting a lot more closer to being law and that's scary and that that includes the shooting down of the drone um (laughs) it doesn't go that far um that douchebag believes that you can uh but (laughs) right (laughs) but what what this uh bill is, is doing is it's saying you cannot uh fly a drone within the uh disturbing the uh, enjoyment of the property by the property owner. They're trying to tag in some of the verbiage from the Cosby case, which is Super the takings vague. clause case, right? Um, so it's they're they're looking at it in two two respects. One is looking at it as the Cosby case, uh, trying to to give you some delineation of what your property is above you and holding people accountable for trespass on that. The other is they've had this long-standing feud in Wyoming and and actually several places out west where property owners will have corners that butt up against each other to uh, federal lands, right? Mm. Um, And so it's legal to be on federal lands as a private citizen. You go out there and go hunting or fishing, what have you. But in these corner situations, right, you have four properties coming together and two are adjacent, or I'm sorry, not adjacent to each other, but kind of uh, diagonal to each other, right? That are public lands and two that are are diagonal to each other that are private lands. And what these private landowners are doing is that they're putting up fences, corner fences, just at that location, right? So you'll have a corner fence and a corner fence. And the only way to get, get to the public lands is to climb up over the fence. Oh, so, that's so douchey. That's so, so but awesome. it's the idea that airspace is public domain, right? So I have a right to be on public land. I could climb up over that fence and that have touched your property, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so Wyoming's trying to kind of look at that and say, hey, we need to crack down on, the, on this corner, right? And at the same time, the only way that we can really go after that is go after drones in airspace. But what about the the freedom of being able to fly in the UAS? Isn't that uh, something? It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, Instead of that's flying the idea, right? anywhere in the country. Airspace. Yes, Dave? Instead of being able to fly nearly anywhere in the country, now you can only fly in the public right away. So you can fly like down the street and film over their property, but don't actually go fly the drone over their property. But now if you're too close to the edge of their border that you're making an annoyance, then they can complain and shoot you out of the sky. That's yeah, that's the the real key. And and some of the, uh, the lobby out there, the, uh, especially the realtors lobby is saying, Hey, wait a minute. If I'm going to take a picture of a property across the street, guess where I got to be. 
I got to be on the other side of the street to get that picture. And that's what you expect when you're buying a house or buying a piece of land is you want to have that aerial shot. The only way I can get it is to be over the next guy's house. Um, or what if I'm trying to stay within my realm of that property, right? And I just happen to scoot by my neighbor's property. Yeah. You know, and right now the legislature is saying that's trespass. What if the wind blows? <laughs> right. Yeah. So what what's going to happen with this? Is it going to go all the way through? Because that's that doesn't so seem. The, yeah. I mean, the the fortunate part is in 2022, right? It died in the house didn't go anywhere. Um, so the hope is that that's what takes place. Uh, there are a couple of things that are helping us, right? Uh, one, uh, the NPPA, uh, that's the same group that sued and won in Texas on the First Amendment concerns of limiting drones, they've already written a letter to the state legislature saying, you do not want to do this or we will bring suit, right? Um, and And they've got some backing behind that to say, look, Check out what Texas had. We're coming after you if you do this. Yeah. Um, so that's one. I think the other is the state senators, they they had a previous, uh, a former state senator come before them who was an attorney. And that, that former senator said, hey, look, if you guys pass this, I guarantee you you're going to lose in court. And the last time that this happened, it was $650,000 out of the pocket of Wyoming citizens' taxpayer dollars. So don't do this. Um, unfortunately, they didn't listen to her. So uh, if logic prevails, <laughs> we can't count on that, uh, then then it'll die. But there's a similar thing happening in, in Dave's corner of the world in Alabama, is there not? Oh, yes. So in Jacksonville, Alabama, what oh, a no fun banjo little music. Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <cue the> music. <laughs> yeah, what's going on in Jacksonville? You hear squealing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Jacksonville, Alabama, put forward a, a uh, an ordinance that basically says you cannot launch uh, land, operate anywhere from public property. Um, they told and, my, me that my seven year old daughter cannot fly the drone in the public park anymore. Yeah. Isn't that something? They said that I have to go talk to the sheriff each and every time that my seven-year-old daughter wants to go fly her tiny whoop. Where it, it's 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 15 grams. It's it's tiny. It's. And they added to that to say if if you're going to be able to fly, you're going to have to request a permit. And yeah, you're going to have to request that permit each and every time. They, I'll tell you right now, they do not have a means to request a permit. They don't have a permit. There is no such thing. So, so I was told to go to the sheriff's office and waste yeah. the sheriff's time asking him if my seven-year-old can fly a tiny whoop. Right. And did you tell them to go themselves? Oh, I was close. I was trying to be civil. It was like a, uh, uh, a public body or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down for going to do a, a drone in out there. I mean, we, I feel like we need to go – and bring my my seven year old daughter as a mascot and go fly drones in that park, and see if they yeah take this. yeah the the thing is all of these municipalities and it's the same it's the same everywhere that you know they'll go to Kinkos make a no drone zone sign it's wishful thinking they and and but but they'll say it under the guise of the law they'll say you can't do that you can do that it's just that you wish that we couldn't do that. It, you you want us to not be able to do that, but we actually can do that. But the onus is on us to fight it, as always, right? Yeah, I I think the couple of the challenges, right, and and this is something really seriously to take into account when you look at Jacksonville and their language, right? It says two different things. One, it says you can't launch land or fly over public property. So the over, right? That's airspace. That's FAA. They are completely out of their realm. And uh, Singer versus New Newton City takes effect, right? That we can say, hey, you are out of your jurisdiction. That is solely with the FAA. But when they say launch or land, now suddenly we're talking about land use. And in that respect, Alabama does not yet have a preemption clause, which would then negate any uh, local ordinance. So in this case, they're actually allowed to have that 
ordinance, which is a, a big problem. So, uh, David, I think, yeah, what needs to happen is kind of go to the ridiculousness of the the ordinance, right? And and chase that with uh, public opinion, uh, potentially news media, right? Um, or try to consult with the more moderates that are on the city council uh, and to be able to say, here's why this is so stupid. This is why you need to get rid of it. Um, so, you know, flying a, a, a tiny whoop on a public street, uh, what am I hurting? Right. And right. and you get enough people that see that and they they see that a kid is just out there trying to have fun. At that point, you're going to have calls go to the, the council and say, what the hell are you doing, guys? Let's get rid of this thing. Can we can we legally by federal law park across the street and fly over their park? Yes, you could. Yeah. As long as you're, is you it, know, find is, some private property and have the private property owner say, you don't yeah, have to please, do that. You, you know, don't have to have do that. that. You don't have to do that. You don't have well, to do I mean, that. Look, they, here, this is Jacksonville. This is ordinance that this says is, you can't take off in the city. This is Jacksonville, Alabama. And you can't Alabama. take off there. Then they can do that by law, but I, right. they can't control the air. And so if I if they've said I can't fly from the park, that's fine. If they say I can't fly over the park, that's that's not okay. That's out of their jurisdiction. Is it a state park so or a city park? It, and here's the worst part of it is they told me that the reason that they had made this ordinance is because there's like a jail in town. And it's like – well, just call the FAA and tell them that you have a jail and you need a no-fly zone. Like, follow the procedure that is in place by the federal government. They don't Except know the to FAA do that. Is not going to do that for you. <laughs> well, I mean, how do you how do you get a, a jail designated you as can, a, a no-fly zone? I don't know the process of geofencing, but you can get. It's easier to get a geofence for uh, for drones than it is to get but, the FAA to do something. Right. But but then when somebody tries to fly their Mavic over the property, it'll actually stop them and not allow people to fly there because it's legally designated instead of uh, some random ordinance that you have to look up and learn about that there it's not public knowledge. It's like how how are you supposed to learn this stuff? Oh, you just need to subscribe to their Facebook page so you can get a notice <laughs> at Christmas time. What what I would suggest instead, right, um, when you're talking to the these uh, elected officials, right, is that idea of why they think you need to limit flight over a jail, right? The, and they'll express their concerns. Somebody's going to drop some some paraphernalia. Somebody's going to deliver some drugs, right? Um, then the question becomes, isn't that already illegal? Because it is, right? right? So, <laughs> right. so you aren't. If you create an ordinance that says specifically you can't deliver a drug via a drone, then what you're doing is you're watering down your existing ordinances such that somebody decides, oh, I'm going to deliver a drug by a um, RC boat. The people that are delivering drugs into a jail don't care about ordinances. The city ordinances are going to stop them. Yeah. Oh, didn't you see that uh, Kinko's No Drone Zone sign? Guess we'll have to deliver the drugs another way. But a no-fly zone that stops their Mavic at the part of the property would actually deter 90% of these guys. Mm. I mean, I actually had somebody yeah. who reached out to me uh, last year. I remember and was you like, telling me that. He was like, hey, I, I've got a job for you like you've never done before, and it's going to pay you like $10,000. And I was like, oh. Let's hear about it. <laughs> and he I, he was like, yeah, yeah, it's no big deal. We just need you to like fly with a package. And I was like, oh, let me guess, a jail drop. And he's like, yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's just some cell phones and stuff. Don't worry about it. Right. I'm like, oh, yeah, no thanks. And they thought that they he's were like, the first ones to think of it. He's like, hey, uh, what about your friends? Can you you know recommend somebody that would be uh, you know discreet? And that's <laughs> when like, you called me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, Ken's, Ken's real discreet. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it, sure. Idiots. Oh, man, we got 419 people watching right now. Let's get one more in there, guys. All right. Cool. 420. Yeah, you know, you think about this, too. That I mean, we're operating under current conditions and visual line of sight. But once we get remote ID coming into place, the FAA has already said, we're going to allow beyond line of sight. We are going to change the rules to ease that restriction. And so you think about that. Even like a Mavic, right? What do you get? A couple of miles? So you're going to be able to stand outside city boundaries and fly over that jail anyway. The whole so, line of sight thing is nonsense to me, too. Like, 
I fly behind a wall. I'm beyond line of sight all of a sudden. And now I can't fly my drone anymore. It's like, no, that's the whole reason I have an FPV system. It's so that I can. Yeah. And so that I can still see. Yeah. Even though I've left the building, like I can still see. Just if FPV stuff, it's more dangerous to fly <laughs> line of sight. Um, yeah. uh, so now speaking of, of this, uh, this fight with city stuff. Now, everybody knows you can't fly in a national park. Um, although some, uh, big operations like Netflix and production companies can get permits apparently, but it takes forever. Uh, state parks, you can't fly in. You can fly Without over permission. Some, I've flown in some, you state can. parks. You can fly over, but you can't land or take off in them. Right. That's still the thing, right? You got to get permission. Actually, most state parks in the United States do allow uh, drone flights. Um, there are a handful of states that do not. Um, it, it, you look closely at the rules. So even here in Michigan, right, uh, they have rules that say you cannot fly over a rest area. You cannot fly over a beach, right? Well, over is outside of their jurisdiction, so you're fine. Uh, but the Michigan Department of, of um natural resources has put forward what's called land use ordinance. And you can look at that and go, 90% of these don't apply to me. Uh, the only ones that do are like, well, you cannot launch or land at Tequamanon Falls viewing platform. So if you can't like, launch land there, just go 10 feet away. Right. And right? you're always going to get a warning, whether it be from the local authorities or the FAA. The only places you won't get a warning are military bases. <laughs> And freaking airports, you won't get a warning. You will get arrested. And you know, like the Super Bowl or something. Just you know, TFRs. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be don't be an idiot. But speaking of, yeah, city, I heard SWATs taking people down hours before TFRs even start. Yep. Wow. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, an incident I had recently at the Parthenon in Nashville, and I. If she's watching, I apologize to the security guard. I just, I was having, I was having a day and I just didn't have any patience. I was like, oh, here we go again. And I just, get out of my face. But, uh, um, so she said that we're not allowed to fly there in Centennial Park. And uh, according to the, to the FAA in the airspace, I've flown there for years. A lot of people have flown there. Uh, it's okay. Now. If she had said, we don't want you to fly here, then I'd be like, oh, well, all right. And I would have left. But when she says, you can't fly here. Oh, no. Well, you're wrong, sister. Wrong. You can. And that's what got my dander up. But uh, Ryan and I actually talked about this because I got a comment. Here's, here's the comment from a viewer of that video. Uh, he said, I work for the city of Nashville and have seen many tickets given to drone flyers in our parks, including the one you were in. Metro Parks is not able to permit the use of drones in parks outside designated flying areas for any purpose, including photography, filming. Uh, Metro ordinances require that no person shall voluntarily bring land or cause to descent or align within or uh Upon any park, any airplane, flying machine, balloon, parachute, or other apparatus aviation, which includes drones, uh, drone flight is not allowed in the Nashville Metro Parks except in three designated areas. And then he cites the, the, the ordinance there. And uh, one of the things I noticed about this was uh, 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 uh. Metro Parks is not able to permit the use of drones in parks. Well, that's right. Because you're not the FAA, you can't do anything with the with the airspace. But you actually looked into that ordinance, and there was some interesting wording, was there not? Well, yeah. So <laughs> here's the bad news. Uh -oh. I did look into it, and I looked into it even further uh, uh -huh. last night and into the tomorrow, uh, into this morning. Yeah. Um, so a, a couple of things that are really key, and I don't, you might like, even want to show that ordinance again, right? The first piece of that, it says, no person shall voluntarily bring. So not only are they talking about landing or launching, right? They're even saying you cannot bring a drone into the park, which is kind of interesting, right? Yeah. He, what uh, if Ken Heron made me do it? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there's there is uh, uh, rules along that lines too. <laughs> Aiding and abetting. They they have that in here too. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. So they're they are using land use ordinance, um, and I do find that Tennessee does not yet have the state preemption clause that would disallow uh, local or ordinances right for drones so we do have to look at that land use so technically yes they can say you can't bring land cause right launch land etc um now they don't have the airspace so you could stand outside the park Mm -hmm. and fly over the park and they have no say or they might want to say they do right um but then they're violating their jurisdiction because they're they're taking on the faa's jurisdiction right um so there's a couple things in this thing that I'm, I'm kind of interested by. One is it saying you can't bring or land, da, 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 and it's talking about a balloon. So literally, a child cannot have a balloon and let that – one, you can't bring that balloon into the park, huh. and then you couldn't let that balloon fall onto the park grounds. How ridiculous is They're that? They're seriously dangerous, though, man. I mean – Oh, it's... <laughs> yeah. The bl- you can't oh. just you can't just hand a balloon to a toddler. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that to me that's one of those very interesting things. And then we looked at that other ordinance um, that was uh, uh, adjacent to it, right? And it was talking about uh, toy. Uh, it says you cannot. No person shall in, uh, in any park engage in toy aviation, model boating, or model automobiling. Well, that's down the, the air hogs, right? So I won't, I won't bring any uh, toy uh, aviation, just my drones. Just drones. I won't bring any toys, <laughs> right? So that's that's pretty. Uh... What do I look like, a baby? You think I got toy grade <laughs> drones? <laughs> yeah, man. These are these are. I'm a pro. I got I got man <laughs> man man toys. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, toys. Th- this is one where I would probably uh, do some of the same things that we're we're looking at doing in the state of Michigan. Um, and this one I wanted to bring up as well. Um, we have uh, a number of universities in the state of Michigan that disallow drones on their campus. Uh, most notably is the University of Michigan, uh, which is uh, the university I hate because I'm a Spartan, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so go blow instead of go blue. And um, <laughs> they disallow drones to be flown over their campus. Well, their stadium, the big house, sits literally right across the street from just regular old houses, everyday, you know, private property. So the plan that we have, and it's we've already executed it a little bit, is to stand on the private property in the backyard fly the drone up over campus property and let the campus police come to us, right? And in, in the first case, they actually did. Uh, they they then trespassed onto the private property oh. to say, you cannot fly over and we'll confiscate your drones and ticket you, et cetera. And what'd you do? Um, so this next time through, we're going to do it again. And this time we're going to call the Ann Arbor police and say, hey, you want to come out because – these guys are about to trespass on the property, and we're going to press charges. What do they have? An aeroscope to track you down? Yes, they do. Do they really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How much is and, an a- remote ID? Is just going to make it worse. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So where? So so where's the good news? I thought we were talking about good news. I thought we were talking about <laughs> where's the good news? I have the good news is somewhere. Where is it? It's Ryan, all on you, my website, Do man. you have the good news? FlyIFPV.com. <laughs> ah. It's nothing but happy thoughts over there. I think the good news in the park here that, you know, to, to test the one in in um, Nashville would be to go to one of their designated areas, fly from their designated area <laughs> yeah. over the place that they don't want you to fly a drone. Yeah. Because the moment that you're over that place, it's not their jurisdiction any longer. Mm. And you're com- you're completely uh, abiding by their rules because you're in their designated area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Ken, Ken, how do we send this guy money so that we, he can continue to do what he's doing? Yeah, because, you know, his, his main <laughs> job is not doing this for us. Uh, there yeah, are, but we need to help him so that he can do this more. There are uh, links to how you can help uh, Ryan in the description. And if any of our uh, moderators want to post a link in the chat, that would be awesome as well. 
I love what you do, Ryan. Thank you. Well, thank you. you. I you appreciate went to it. When, when we saw these guys going crazy in Jacksonville too, like jumped right in. And I, 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 I don't know the law like a lawyer, but I'm a part 107 pilot. I know pretty well. And, uh, you know, we're sitting there arguing with these guys and then a lawyer jumps in the chat and it's like, yeah, I, we got this. <laughs> and you know, the, they shut down the comments on that really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah they don't I mean, want they were getting blown up. There, there were drone guys all over. And the funny thing was, every single one of the drone guys that was on there that I saw were all part 107 pilots. Every single one of them, professional drone pilots who were like, hey, this is not okay. Like, why would you do this? Like, yeah. this isn't the way that the law works. It's good to have people like Ryan uh, fighting for us. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that's something that's going on in New York. Yes. You want to tell us about yes. that? I, yeah. So, um, you know, in Michigan, we have the uh, state uh, preemption law, right, that disallows local governments from creating or enforcing their own ordinances. And it's a law that we've actually tested in court and won uh, multiple times. So what we have is that same type of law has now been tested in Illinois, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And so we feel as though we can start to really truly expand with a grassroots effort to engage legislatures across the United States uh, and, and have them pass a similar bill. Um, so our first step here is New York. New York is one that, um, that New York City has an navigation law that's a 70-year-old piece of junk. Uh, it needs to get thrown out. Um, and the real way to do that, we think, is to go through the state legislature. So uh, we've created a, uh, a couple of different form letters that can be utilized uh, to engage legislatures, uh, legislators there, elected officials. Um, and we've asked folks in the state of New York uh, to go knock on the, their um, doors of, of their state senators or uh, uh, representatives and say, hey, you know, here's why we need to pass this. And it's really critical because at some point, right, there's a decent chance that the FAA says, hey, we're going to extend a portion of airspace to states to regulate. We're going to give that authority over to um, whatever police forces are. If we don't have preemption in place for those states, every single ordinance or every single local government is going to create their own ordinance and we're going to have this patchwork quilt that's absolute nightmare to figure out can i fly here can i fly there right can it'll I, be do it, i have to do this to fly do i have to do this instead yeah it, it'll just, be that, instead of federal it'll be it'll be like uh marijuana laws it'll be state by yeah. state right Dave? I mean, we don't <laughs> yeah, need that it's not state by state it's city <laughs> by city and yeah. county by county and like they can just make up whatever bs they want at this if if we allow them to Yep. to get away with it. And we can't, we just cannot allow them to get away with it. We've got to fight any way we possibly can because otherwise they're going to set rules up and you'll end up getting fined and nobody wants that. Yeah. But there's, there's a bit of civil disobedience that we can also do just, I mean, I, I mostly fly Absolutely. bandos. So it's, it's hard for me because like the places I fly, I, I'm probably not supposed to be there anyway. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say about fences, Dave? Yeah, f fuck fences, man. <laughs> I got zero time and patience for fences. Uh, 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 I, I'm not the guy that carries the wire clippers, but I do. I'm pretty good at finding the holes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I I ask this all the time of 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 anybody uh, of your caliber, Ryan. That's on. Uh, how do you think this is all going to shake out? Do you think they're going to keep kicking the remote ID can down the road, or we have to worry about September? What, what are your your I, opinion on that? Yeah, so I do think that they are going to go forward with a September date. Uh, if it gets kicked down the road, I suspect it's only by three months. Um, I don't see it. I don't see it going beyond that. Um, things are in place. A number of drones already have uh, remote ID uh, baked into them. Uh, it, actually, every single drone that you buy now that's been uh, manufactured since uh, December absolutely has remote ID into it. No, it uh, doesn't. But, no, it oh. doesn't. Well, okay, <laughs> that's FPV, cool. sorry. <laughs> that is, no, no, even if you go to Walmart right now, you find a new one that's just been manufactured, they're not all going to have it. Uh, they're so slow catching up. Now, you go buy a DJI, sure, 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 sure. 
but there's tons of Chinese junk that's just flooding in. Oh, yeah. oh so, you can, yeah, you, you I, can import. I, I, I mean, they, this, yeah, they can import we're it. We're talking drone versus toy. Yeah, <laughs> right. They can import it and have it in stock, and still sell yeah. it after the. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, but, and it could be and, manufactured quite a long time ago too. Right. And this will never have remote ID. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you rebel. I mean, hey, I've got three of these. I may end up having to put it on one to do my professional gig work, but the rest of them don't need remote ID. I don't, uh, I don't see a need for it. There's no they, basis of safety or justification that says that for for us to have to be logging. That that's the other part of it. They claim that they're not going to log it. There's already companies who are like, we're logging it in 50 cities. Right. Listen, if and you I think that's enjoy be the key is. We'll see. We'll see lots of folks that say, you know what? I'm just not doing it. I'm not going to get the firmware upgrade. I'm still going to fly my own drone. There's no way I'm putting a module on. And it's that compliance that F the FAA has a problem with. So even with with manned aircraft, they mandated that if you are going to fly, uh, at you know, in controlled airspace, you absolutely have to have ads B. Uh, only 40 percent of of Cessnas right now have ads B. They just and you can't tell me they aren't flying in controlled airspace. The FAA knows it, but it's compliance. No updates for this guy. Bottom line, my no opinion, updates. my opinion. Um flying flying this is just an annoyance, all this stuff. Flying is so much fun to me that I'll do what I have to do. Um, you know, but uh I'll also do what I have to I'll do what I have to do for one oh seven stuff, but I'll also do what I must do for my heart for fun stuff so whatever you interpret that as uh I, you yep. know i'm not I, condoning that, uh you that know what i mean happen a lot yeah i mean there's just going to be people that just won't do it and and i i i think you know until until there are actual drone police that we have to depend on these uh, misinformed local authorities uh to enforce this stuff and that's a problem because we're already asking the police to do so much. There already are mental health experts. You know, the, the police do a lot. You know, whether you like them or not, the police can they, have can a they lot on their shoulders. Seven-year-old to fly in the public park. No, <laughs> well, come on, listen. I, let, she wants to fly every day because she's she's a champion. I know, but uh, you know, like we had to go talk to Johnny Sheriff every single day now so that we can get permission. I know, but you know, Johnny Sheriff is and, also worried about um, murderers and and felons and everything else. And you know, to, as important as this stuff is to us, it's just not important to local authorities. It's not. It's an annoyance, and so their default is going to be like, "No, nope, can't do it." It's easier for an authority to say, "No, nope, can't do it," rather than, "Yeah, you can do it here, but then here, or you have to go here and go to this website or whatever." It's easier just to blanket, "Nope," and let you sort it out. And that's what we have been yep. doing. <laughs> We were going to do that and allow for people to come fly here, but that was going to, we were going to have to make a new form. And so we just uh, said, no, no permits. Yeah. So uh, Ryan, 10 years from now, where are we? Ooh, 10 years. 10 years. Let's go back in time, right? Yeah. Where were we 10 years ago? Oh, oh right. Yeah. <laughs> So if we look at what we were doing 10 years ago, everybody was flying. There was no rules whatsoever. Well, the FAA said, well, you have to have a 333 if you're going to fly commercial. Nobody did anyway. Um, I think there's a good chance that it's going to be quite the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're asking a lot. Um, yeah. I, I'm I mean, optimistic when you think about it. We, you know, we are still the safest aircraft in the skies, bar none. The last time that there was a fatality was 2013, and that was an RC helicopter, and the, the the fatality was to the pilot himself. We have never had a multi rotor death since they've been introduced. And how many turtles have killed pilots? <laughs> Seriously, turtles, yeah. how you, many, you Dave? Turtles. Helicopters alone, right? In the United States, helicopters have approximately 20 fatalities per year. That's just the U.S. Aircraft, uh, you know, uh, manned aircraft in terms of airplanes are above that total. And here we're sitting at zero over the past 10 years. Yep. Unless you're in the Ukraine. 
<laughs> <laughs> that that kind of ruins the curve. But uh, yeah, good dust. I, I'm optimistic <laughs> about 2023. I I I really am. Um, don't be if if you love drones, do what you have to do to get through this little speed bump. It's a little speed bump. I maybe I'm minimalizing it. Yes, but I love flying so much. Uh, I'm never going to give it up. So but you know, if you hit a speed bump going really fast, it turns it into a ramp. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And and you know, you think that well, we're past January now, but uh, you know, hey, New Year's resolution: take time to engage a legislature, to engage an elected official, and teach them about drones, to educate, right? To yeah start to move the the needle such that we can get rid of terrible laws um you know the the interest is to stop them before they start because once they're in effect it does take money and time to get them out right we need to get a set of goggles on this douchebag yep <laughs> at, or have a fly in at his house where is he wisconsin what's his name again Wyoming. He's gonna start shooting. Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah. Bring your bring your helmets. Bring bring your Kevlar, <laughs> and uh, and and we'll we'll have a fly in over at D Bag's house. Anyway, uh, Ryan, thank you so much for your time as always. Thank you. Always great to be here. Appreciate it. All right, we'll see you later, bud. And uh, links to all of your stuff in the description if you want to uh, help him monetarily, as you should, because helping him helps us all. Thank you, sir. Please.